Now, normally when you put this into the system, it's in the same kind of area for a lot of the tax software as though you're making uh, a disposal. So it would be like a Schedule D kind of thing because it's a capital gain kind of situation, although you're gonna have a loss in this situation because instead of having a sales price, you just disposed of the property, or in other words, the property was involuntarily destroyed or something like that. So I'm just gonna call it personal property. Personal property, I'm gonna say date acquired negative 010100, which will create a various date in my software. And then the date sold, I'm gonna say sometime within 2022 when the disaster happened, let's say 060602 or 22. And sometime in 2022, sales price is zero because I didn't sell it, it got destroyed. The cost, let's say is 10,000. And then I'm gonna find on the left-hand side where it says uh, we have a casualty loss, casualty theft and loss, form 4684. Description, I'm gonna say it was like a fire, let's say personal property, disaster code. You'd have to find the proper disaster code. Most software should have the disaster codes implemented because this is how they set the whole thing up, right? You gotta designate the disaster code. Now, again, there's a difference between the qualified disaster and something that's non-qualified. Non-qualified is less beneficial. Let's start with that. And then uh, FEMA disaster declaration code, so this is for a qualified disaster. So I'm just, I'm not gonna add it for this one. And then a qualified California disaster code. Again, you could find those uh, if they're applicable, you should be able to find them on the, on the FEMA website and the IRS website, and then drill down on the specifics of the disaster related to you. Fair market value before casualty and theft. Now, normally the fair market value will be less than the cost unless it's like real property, like a house where the house might have increased in value. But if it was a car, you would expect the fair market value to be less than the cost. So that's what I'm going to put here. And then the fair market value after casualty, meaning was there any value after the problem? I'm going to say zero. It, it was washed into the sea. And then insurance, let's say the, re, the insurance reimbursed us, but didn't fully reimburse us just to get an idea of that of 1000. And let's see what that does for us. So if I pull over to the schedule A, notice it's still not populating anywhere. If I jump to the form 4684, let's go over to the 4684. It's starting to populate the casualty and theft loss form here. And you can see the calculation of 10,000 and then uh, minus the 1000 and it basically took the lesser of the cost or the fair market value minus the reimbursement of the insurance which gets us to the 8000 and then it's following the rule of taking 100 percent and then it should be taking that 10 percent of the agi but in any case it's not pulling over to the schedule a right now because in this case i'm not clearing the threshold uh to to be able to itemize so let's let's pretend we're going to clear the threshold. So I'm going to, and I'm going to, I'm going to make a couple changes. I'm going to lower the, the, the AGI, the wages. So I'm going to say, let's say the wages were at 50,000. So now 10% will be a lot lower and I should still get a deduction of that. And then I'm going to, and so if I go back on over, notice it still is not populated in a schedule A. Let's then 